This is Matt. Did you feel did you feel like coming into the game that the offense was going to take a step forward? Um, and just how did you feel like you guys played tonight? No, I felt good coming out of the uh, of the open week. You know, I thought we had a, a really good week of practice. Uh, really created some adversity with the noise and the indoor. You know, I thought the guys did a good job of, of handling that. Uh, we knew it was going to be a challenge with uh, all of the, the shifting and movement uh, that they do. Obviously, different uh, different than what we faced the week before, where uh, you know BC more just lines up and four down. You know, that know how to target them. So I knew there'd be some challenges, but I thought the guys. Uh, progress well throughout the course of the week and you know I think they were confident that, that this was going to be the game that we were going to break out but we just still continue to shoot ourselves in the foot you know a costly penalty here a costly missed block there you know a miscommunication you know when we're starting to get drives and again that'll, that'll get us out of rhythm and I thought we did a couple of good things man we had some long long drives that we put together you know Syracuse was going to play a lot more coverage you know than they've done in the past until, until later in the game they played with the one-man coverage but they were going to make us earn it you know, we put the ball in the air a couple of times down the field. We didn't, uh, we didn't, didn't come down with it. You know, so so again, it's it's just back to the drawing board. And, you know, one thing is is the guys still have the will to win. Uh, you know, they're working their butts off. Uh, just at some point, we, we're very optimistic that it's going to turn. We just don't know what it is, and that was the challenge in the locker room. You know, the only thing that's holding us back is is us uh, in uh, in uh, in getting out of our own way. Tony, are there are when you are in a tough situation, third and five, third and six, whatever it may be, do you feel like you have plays right now that you can go to and are confident, okay, our guys can go execute this and we can pick this up? You know, I think I think that uh, you know, where we are is if you're thinking you're thinking players, you know, in, in most of those situations and going to your guys and um, but then you gotta have protection. Everything's gotta everything's gotta marry up, you know, guys gotta win. Uh, if it's a if it's a man beater, you know, you got to create the rub, you know, the depths, all those things are important. So we just got to continue to go back to work there. Uh, there were a couple situations in, uh, in the game, just, you know, communicating with coach, just like, okay, let's, you know, let's run the ball here uh, in this situation. Uh, and obviously he's in control of managing the game. So, you know, some of those, uh, you know, mid-yard situations was, uh, was a, a product of that. And then the other ones, you know, we just got to do a better job of, of, uh, of the details and throwing and catching and executing and um, everybody doing their job. Hey, Coach Elliott, this is Chris Heidel from Hermiston Radio in Baltimore. Congratulations on the win. Talk about DJ's performance tonight. He did a really good uh, two-minute drill late in the first quarter, in the second half, or the second I, quarter. You know, I thought DJ did a good job of, of uh, taking care of the ball. You know, first and foremost, that's two weeks in a row with no turnovers, you know, which is big, gives you an opportunity to win. You know, I thought he put the ball in places where they needed to be, and we just didn't come down with the catches. I can only recall, you know, two, two throws that, that I can recall that he missed. He missed a hitch route that uh, hit the ground, and then there was a deep ball. Uh, down the uh, down the sideline that we didn't connect the Ross on. Uh, but other than that, he put the ball in places for the guys to make catches. I mean, he ran the ball when we needed him to run the ball. Uh, obviously, he had to move a lot in the pocket, and so he wasn't able to get you know to get settled on some things uh, from a protection standpoint, which is always tough on a quarterback, um, especially in some third down situations. Uh, turning guys, you know, loose not not completely loose, but you know, giving up giving up pressure. So overall, I thought DJ man, he just continues to get better. Um, obviously. Uh, you know, numbers are not necessarily where you want him to be, but at the end of the day, he's managing the game where, the way we're asking him to do. He got better in, in giving the guys opportunities to make catches, uh, and we just didn't make the catches for him. Tony, this is Larry Williams. Given that Syracuse was came in playing coverage, is 116 yards rushing kind of far off of what you probably expected coming in, given their mm -hmm. their what they were doing? Right, I thought we were going to be able to run the ball, uh, but I also think that you know we, we we cut some drives short too. That we were going to, you know, we had we had a good drive coming out, we snapped the ball over the head, we lose 17 yards, you know, and now we're playing catch up, you know, so that's an opportunity right there. If you keep that drive growing, you know, you're going to have an opportunity to pick up maybe 30, 40 more yards rushing. Um, and, and again, uh, you know, biggest thing for us is we got to get out our own way. You know, the numbers are not where they are because of a reflection of you know one guy over here, you know, have a holding penalty when we have a false start. And then you have a guy that doesn't execute his block the right way, uh, forces the running back to stop his feet before uh, before he's ready to get there, before he gets to the line of scrimmage. So it's just, you know, one thing after another. Um, and it's not one guy in particular. It just seems like at the most inopportune time, you know, we're having that having that one breakdown, uh, which which gets us out of rhythm. And therefore, we're, we're not able to sustain drives, which is going to lead to, you know, the, the, the outcome or the production that people are used to from uh, from this offense. How much of how much of your, I guess, plan was disrupted when, when you learned that, that Hunter, I guess you learned today that, that Hunter's out and you got to go with, with Mason. You know, found out this morning, you know, that he was going in a uh, COVID protocol about 10 o'clock and, you know, discussed it. And, and, you know, fortunately for Mason, 
you know, he had an opportunity to snap uh, throughout the course of the week. Uh, had an option there with uh, with Bockhorst going back to center, you know, but felt like the best thing to do was to, to give Mason Trotter a, uh, an opportunity. And outside of the snap, I felt like Mason, you know, did a did a solid job, you know, of, of coming in and uh, being ready with the next man up. So it wasn't a ton. You know, I think the thing that disrupted us more than anything was just the penalties, you know, the missed and the missed plays, a uh, couple missed blocks on the uh, on the perimeter. Um, you know, we had a holding call on a big uh, screen play to the tight end there. So just those things probably disrupted us more than uh, uh, than Rayburn uh, going into a protocol this morning. Tony, with the offensive line, it seemed like uh, maybe you guys were much quicker to, to shuffle someone in if there was a mistake this game. Um, would, would that be accurate? And then just how did you feel like the unit played overall? You know, de definitely, man, making sure that that, uh, that there's accountability at every position. So not just, you know, it's the same thing. You know, I guess the easiest thing to see is if a wideout drops a ball or has a bad play, you can see when a substitution is made there. A lot of times, you know, you might miss it on the offensive line. But we knew going into the game, you know, that we were going to have to shuffle some people around. Uh, obviously, the uh, you know the plan was was different. You know when we woke up this morning, and then it changed. So so we wanted to keep eyes on the situation. And you know I thought they did a good job in in, in establishing the line of scrimmage in the run game. Uh, but feel like we had to do a better job from a protection standpoint. There were a couple of uh, one on ones that we lost that that, uh, that I thought we had a better matchup uh, just to be able to you know I guess second and second and three. We've been running the ball, set up a play action. We get beat on a one on one, give up a sack. Um, then the, the opening uh, I think the opening drive of the game. You know, we're in a five-man protection. We're in third and long. We're trying to throw the ball down the field, and we lose a one-on-one. -on -one. So I thought in the run game they did some really good things, uh, but in the pass game we got to we got to do a better job protecting our quarterback. Tony, what did y'all learn during the open day? And I guess some of the important uh, conclusions and, and and maybe wrinkles that you came up with. I know you you went under center a good bit um, tonight. What were some some of those those things? Coming up you know, here. just, you know, in the, in the run game, you know, just a little bit of a change up, you know, get those backs, you know, you look at Kobe, look at Moffa, uh, they're bigger guys, man, get them going downhill, you know, let's the offensive line fire off the ball. Uh, so that was something that we worked on, you know, DJ is comfortable under center, uh, gives us an opportunity down the road to, to, to increase that plan uh, there. Uh, biggest thing for us was, was trying to get healthy. You know, we got a lot of guys out and we lost, you know, I lost EJ again this week, you know, Frank was, was available. Um, so we had to get healthy more, more so than anything. Um, and, and really focus on focus on us and the details and thought we had momentum coming out of Boston College, man. You go watch the offensive line play. I thought we took a step forward uh, and was really, really, you know, excited about tonight. And I'm sure when you watch the tape, it's not going to be, you know, it's never as bad as you think. It's never as good as you think. So I think there will probably be a lot of positive things that we can build off of, but just an opportunity as well for us to continue to grow and teach and, and, uh, and improve, especially when, we, uh, when we're facing, uh, facing odd structures. Tony, not yeah, to does. look too, not yeah. to look too far ahead, but just next week, do you feel like it's going to have to be a game where, and not only next week, but just you guys are going to have to start putting up some more points to not keep putting the defense in such tough situations. Well, I, I mean, it's every week. You know, this week I want to put up uh, more points. I think I think every kid in that locker room, you know, wants to score more points. I think they want to have the, you know, the production and the output that you know uh, you know we're accustomed to. You know, here at Clemson, least for, for some for you know. A lot of reasons, you know, some things we can control, some things we can't control. Uh, it's just not happening. You know, the biggest thing for us is just, hey, let's continue to come to work every single day. Uh, make sure that we have four, four great days of practice. You know, use this extra time uh, with tomorrow's rest and Sunday's rest to, uh, to, to refresh and, and, and go back to the drawing board. But we know down the stretch, if we want to end the season uh, the way that we want to, yes, we're going to have to figure out, uh, you know, how to play our best football. And uh, we're not looking farther ahead than, uh, than Pittsburgh. We know that Pittsburgh is a really good football team uh, playing at their place. And, and we got to do a good job of putting together a great plan for our players. And our players got to do a great job of owning the plan and then immensely and physically getting themselves ready to play their best game of the season. So we're not looking far ahead. But, yes, definitely everybody wants to score more points. Everybody wants to you know, play complimentary football with our defense. And uh, we're going to accept the challenge and go back to work. That's all we can do. And, and, uh, and keep believing that, that each week it's going to be the week uh, that it all comes together. Do you have an update on Braden Galloway? You know, Braden wasn't wasn't able to make the trip. Uh, he was making a lot of progress, uh, so I anticipate by the time we get back and you know get back to work on Monday, he'll be uh, he'll be ready to go. Anything else, for Coach? All right, thank you, Coach. I appreciate y'all.